With over 120,000 members globally, the VMware User Group connects VMware customers, partners, and employees to VMware information, resources, knowledge sharing, and networking. Visit the VMUG Lounge in VM Village to learn more. Become a part of the community today. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sanjay Poonan. And I opened the speech with a musical interlude introducing the product. I'm not going to do that today, but I have decided if my software career sputters, or if Pat decides my software career sputtered, I am going to start a blues bar in San Francisco. But uh, we are excited to be here. The marketing team, Robin Matlock and her team have done an incredible job. And to me, what's special about this event is the cult-like following of 23,000 of you. And I just thought to show you two pictures to open this off. Here is an 80-year-old woman, okay, Terry McConnell and her husband, Jerry. They have been coming to every one of the VM worlds, okay, maybe the oldest person, and this is in front of their RV. They came in to take a class uh, here, and to me, this is inspiration that there is life after retirement and perpetual learning, so thank you, Terry. But not to be outdone, they're 18 and 20-year-olds, so if you're a 20-year-old or an 80-year-old, we've got lifelong learning. This represents the culture and value of VM world. We're excited. Now, let me, as I talk over the course of the next 20, 25 minutes, uh, I want to talk to you about the world going digital. This is an incredible revolution. The first industrial revolution was all about steam and mechanization. The second industrial revolution was about, you know, the early forms of mass production. The third industrial revolution was about electronics in the form of computer. But the fourth revolution we think is going to be huge because it's going to influence every part of our lives. For example, you take education. My three, uh, three kids, a nine-year-old girl and twin six-year-old boys, their life is being transformed with education. They probably learned to pinch and zoom before they learned to read and write. And the way in which education is being done now in schools in Santa Clara District is one that's being transformed through Khan Academy. People learn during the afternoon and evenings on an iPad and come to classrooms and do a case study. Healthcare is being completely transformed too. What do we love about doctors? Extremely smart. Their handwriting sucks, though, with apologies to my mom. She's a doctor. But the entire way in which you think about the way in which you can exchange information, x-rays are digitized with voice recognition. You can actually read their uh, prescription. And if you thought this was just high-tech, low-tech industries are being transformed, too. My grandparents in India grew up on a tea plantation in India. And I was talking to folks who now run that industry. The entire tea estates is being digitized. People come in, they know who they are because the eye or the person can be retina scanned. The, B, the tea bags are digitized in terms of their weight. And the exact amount is paid on a micropayment uh, on a mobile phone. So every part of our life is being completely transformed. And VMware's proposition in digital transformation is twofold. We look to transform the data center to make it public cloud ready. That's the first part. That's the bottom part of this vision. And we heard that very eloquently yesterday from Pat and the team. But the top part of this is also important, digitally transforming the end user, preparing it for that mobile cloud era. And the end user computing business was a small part of our you know, portfolio three years ago. We've been investing heavily. We announced at the end of Q4, it's a 1.2 billion run rate business. We've doubled the customer base to about 65,000 customers. It's now one of the top three billion dollar businesses at VMware, thanks to every one of your investments. And we're making this vision of any cloud any app, any device happen in some very physical, tangible ways. Let me explain this to you. If you think about the apps in the world that you live in today, they're typically in three forms. We would love the world to be all web and mobile. But there we believe in the research we've done, there's still about 50% of the world that's client, server, Windows-based. And that's important because some of those are old applications. 40% of the world has probably moved to web 
Some of them are old browsers, some of them newer browser, and maybe 10% are native mo uh, mobile apps. On the other side, you've got an ecosystem of Apple, of Google, of Microsoft. And we are the only company that's got strong ties with all three of these. It's a Switzerland proposition. Apple is doing a customer event here. Not to be outdone, Samsung and Google, you saw their ads as you walked into Las Vegas. We had Microsoft on stage last year. And now the Microsoft ecosystem, players, partners like Dell and HP Inc and Lenovo, bringing this together with our unified offering called Workspace ONE. And what we sought to do as we brought this together was take component spaces like VDI and mobile device management and mobility and identity management and bring them together into one holistic whole. And the power of doing this now is you can bring this divide between users and IT together, where the users, you know, they want choice. The IT, they want control. The users, they want simplicity. The IT wants security. In this world of consumer meets enterprise secure, we think we've got a great proposition. We've also, in our group, been really focused on making our solutions cloud first. And this is very important because a significant part of the future of what we're doing, as you saw yesterday, is not just cloud first in the data center, but in everything we do in Horizon, AirWatch, and identity management. So through the course of my talk today, I'm going to cover three layers. One is how apps and identity work together. Identity management is key to, the, to everything we do. It's sort of like that nervous system that ties everything. The second layer is desktop and mobile and what we're going to call unified endpoint management. And the third is a layer of management and security that underlies all of this. Now, to pull this all together, probably the best way, I thought, you know, rather than do death by PowerPoint, I'm going to show you a lot of product today live. How many of you would like to see demos? Live demos. That's the way to do it. So I'm going to actually take the way in which we actually use the solution day in the life of any of us, from the top office, from Pat Gelsinger down to the receptionist. We have a solution called Workspace ONE, which every one of the 20,000 employees of VMware can use to improve their productivity. Now, it's, research has shown that people pull the phone out of their pockets about 90 to 100 times per day, okay, and perhaps use it for about 90 to 100 seconds. Now, in my case, maybe it's 50% higher, much to the chagrin of my wife and children. But nonetheless, that's the way in which we want to make those 100 seconds extremely productive. And here's what we want to do. As you launch into this experience, you launch Workspace ONE, single sign-on with multi-factor authentication, you have access to all the apps. There's ADP and Aetna, I'm not going to click on them, so you don't have my social security number. You've got Concur, uh, you've got Oracle, EBS, you've got further down there SAP, you've got Salesforce, you've got Workday. We live a best of breed world inside uh, VMware. Then I'm going to actually take a specific application, for example, Workday. And now I don't need to wrap it. Most of the experience in mobile is you've got to wrap it with SDKs. I'm actually going to open up that application, and it's native uh, integrated into AirWatch, so I have single sign-on capabilities with all of the details of how Workday lets me live. And there may be more applications. Now, for example, I might want a content collaboration and a video. Here's BlueJeans, another hot startup that's doing uh, beautiful video collaboration. I'm able to, again, not having to uh, log in a second time. I've got that also figured out. Now, many of you asked us for a secure email container, not because we're fighting native. We actually want to give you a better experience because many of you were frustrated with Good or BlackBerry, and we acquired Boxer, and now we're able to bring you all of that wonderful experience inside a native email and make this consumer simple. For example, swipe gestures for the way in which you may want to actually you know, put an email in a particular folder. Uh, in a way in which I might want to reply. Here's an email from Sumit on my team asking me for a meeting. When it prompts me for the meetings, it looks at my calendar for the available slots and then replies with that perhaps as a suggestion of the times I can meet. Uh, I go back to my inbox. I can look at particular emails. Um, here's an email from Rory Clements. Uh, that usually I put to the, the junk folder. Sorry, Rory. But, um, you know. but Pat, on the other hand, he's an important person. It's doing analytics to detect where that email want, may want to be placed in a particular folder. We're going to take this even further in, in future releases to allow you to, to dig deep, not just into our systems, but also into Salesforce to give you information. That was from a CIO. So you get the sense of how we're making this experience extremely, extremely rich. 
but it could go beyond the way in which you actually use um, you know, an, an inbox. You might actually want to have files that are stored in various different uh, Dropbox, Box, Content you know, Locker here. And here's a file that's in Google Drive that I want to open up. And I want to, as I open it up, this is a partner document, I perhaps want to annotate a particular part off that text and keep it inside the file, uh, cloud file sync and share, in this case, Google Drive. So whether it's Box or Dropbox or OneDrive or Google Drive, we've mapped that all together. Let's take it a step further and inc improve the way in which you look for people, contacts. Uh, our IT built this beautiful application. I can search for here's a sales rep I went on a call with, Anthony Wilson. I want to look up who he reports to. This is navigating either Workday or Active Directory. Simple, easy for me to be able to access. Now, here's the final part that gets me really excited. How many of you look forward to, to T&E expense approvals? Okay, That's like the best thing in our lives. But how about we make all of the approvals, because it's all buried somewhere in your inbox, whether it's Workday approvals, whether it's ServiceNow approvals, whether it's uh, Ariba, Coupa, uh, or Concur, we built an approval application, which is sort of a bucket list of all these approvals. And here, you, with a simple swipe gesture, I can get to all of these approvals. Again, our IT built this just in a couple of weeks, integrated this to Workspace ONE. I can now approve this very, very simply. So you see the productivity experience of all of these applications being done simply in a very, very easy way. This is the way in which we've transformed the workplace at VMware for all 20,000 employees. When I talk to our CIO Basque, he says as he believes he's created value or saved money to the tune of 10 or 15 million dollars. Can I see a show of hands of all the VMware employees here in the room? Okay, the people, some said to them, the people who didn't raise their hands, I want you to go up to every one of these VMware employees and ask them to show you this application. If they can't, you send me an email, okay? And either we've got to find them another job or improve our, uh, our enablement programs. Now, that's not just, you know, when I show an iPhone, the folks at, at Samsung say, hey, show my devices too. Well, we've got Samsung Android devices, and now I'm going to basically take an Android tablet, and I'm going to open up our Horizon Air. Desktop is a service solution where very quickly I got to the same workspace, the digital workspace, Workspace ONE, and here I'm going to open up uh, the ability for us to be able to go very simply and quickly logging in to Horizon Air. And here I've got particular desktops that are very simply and easily shown to me. I'm logging in to a remote desktop. And here is a 3D application for some of you who might be in manufacturing running with all of the 3D capabilities that are powered to us from our partners like NVIDIA. So you see the power of being able to do this in a very, what I call, Sesame Street simple way. Now, many of you know that it's not just these applications that we may build and so on. We have to partner with the leading applications vendors in the world. And VMware has done this better than anybody else. And I'm really excited today to have on stage with me the first guest. This is actually the first time VMware has ever done this with the largest cloud applications player in the world, Salesforce. So please join me in welcoming Stephanie Buscemi, who is EVP of Product and Solutions Marketing from Salesforce. Stephanie. Thank you, Stephanie. Good Welcome to, to VMworld. Um, it's a pleasure. I think it's the first time that we're having Salesforce on stage with us. An exciting moment. Yes. We've been doing a lot together. We're big customers of each other. We run That's on Salesforce. True. I think we're your largest software company. Uh, and you run on vSphere and also uh, use AirWatch. Tell us a little bit about this partnership and what we've been doing in end-user computing together. We're doing a lot of very exciting things together in our partnership. And I think for us at Salesforce, it really just all starts about we want to be able to deploy and manage mobile apps for all of our customers, all integrated with Salesforce, working with you. And it has been a tremendous partnership. It started together about two years ago, uh, really VMware being the pioneer and the leader behind the app configuration community. Uh, that community was born with the whole shared mission that we really need to create a robust, open, and trusted methodology for how we build and deploy mobile apps. And when you brought that to us, we said we want to be part of that. That's what we're committed to doing, and that's what we want to deliver. And now we're very proud, because two years later, with Salesforce ONE, we have that. And not only with Salesforce ONE, we have it with hundreds of mobile apps that we have, and in our partner ecosystem, building on that mobile framework, we have hundreds of partners using that's that awesome. as well. That's awesome. Well, let's just see it together. So. Let's look at how we've done this together maybe in a, in a short demo. 
You want to? Yeah, let's. So let's we can fire actually launch up. this, and here's Wave Analytics. I think you're going to show this to us. That's Go ahead. great. So Take we've got right here Wave. This is Sales Wave. It's for everyone. This particular application is for the sales user, whether you're a sales rep, a sales manager, sales operations. And what I've got done here is gone into a particular dashboard to show you a sales manager view. We've all been there as a sales manager. We run our business from our phone. We want to know where we're at in the quarter. And we know we manage huge teams like you do, and things move. And you want to be able to drill right in and isolate your pipeline movement. You want to know what moved out and why, and get down to the grain. And the beauty of Wave, this mobile app, is you can get down to the grain level, the account level. I can drill in here and understand I'm not going to make my quota. I can go down into my best case. I can sort at the opportunity level and look at all these opportunities. And I can find here very quickly a large opportunity and best case. Well, it's that rep's lucky day, because I'm going to reach out to that rep right here. I have intelligent actions built in here. I have all the opportunity data, and I have integration built in here to go back to that rep, give a post to that rep and chatter, and tell them, we're going to move this deal forward. And from here, I know all the deal dynamics That's here, awesome. all the information on the account. So here we go, all with a couple clicks there on the mobile app, heading into my next customer meeting. I'm able to move a deal. Forward. And as you notice, there was no you know, double login. All the securities checked with AirWatch. This is fantastic to, to see our collaboration together. Thank you for being here with us at VMworld and for the great collaboration. Ladies and gentlemen, it. give it up for Stephanie Buscemi Thank from you. Salesforce. Thank you. Thank you very much. So the second important layer, and listen, the apps partners are very important. Two, three years ago, we had SAP on stage at Oracle. Uh, we had Oracle at Mobile World Congress, uh, you know, Salesforce now. We are looking to continue that great apps partnership with all the leading apps players. As you think about the next layer, desktop and mobile coming together, we've been innovating like never before. And I want to start by first off acknowledging the roots of where desktop started, Fusion and Workstation. Anybody here Fusion and Workstation lovers? Yeah, that's a huge group of you. I've got something very special. We have a free ver license for Fusion and Workstation available. If you download the VMworld app, you can get this for free. I know when I started at VMware, my wife asked me, are you going to VMware? Is that the company that builds Fusion? She didn't care about end user computing. She wanted to know that she could get a copy of Fusion. So, honey, if you're watching this live broadcast, that's for you too. But nonetheless, as you think about all of the aspects of what we've done, we want to make sure that you can build on these capabilities of the desktop capabilities which we're solving. And key to what we're solving with, with our desktop capabilities is, is cracking these two Cs, cost and complexity. Because this has been a nightmare for most of the ways in which BDI has been traditionally built. So Sumit Devan and his team have been innovating like never before. Uh, when I checked, there's like 500 new capabilities they've added in the last 18 months from everything from the virtual to the physical to the cloud, a next-gen user experience, stateless desktops, real-time app delivery. In our cloud, we're adding new data center capabilities. And now with IBM SoftLayer, we're going to have all kinds of global capabilities uh, and also doing that in a hybrid cloud. As a result of our innovation, we're excited about the analyst recognition. And this is really a tribute to every one of you customers who's now allowed us to be number one leapfrogging the competition. We've done the same thing in the mobile portfolio, focusing on two S's, simplicity and security, and making sure this capability of AirWatch that we acquired two and a half years ago, we innovated like never before. Perhaps you heard us talking about device management two and a half years ago. We've morphed that story to now identity management being the center of everything you start off in a mobile experience. And then iterated beyond that to app management and device management, all of that productivity experience that you saw. Similarly, we've been very, very uh, excited about the accolades we've gotten from, the, from our analyst friends. Uh, here in sort of Olympic spirit is the gold, silver, and medal. Um, and you know, rather than do an Usain Bolt, you know, I'm going to just say thank you to every one of you uh, for your uh, you know, validation of our, 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 our performance here. The same in Gartner. We've seen the highest now in vision and in execution. Thank you to every one of you customers and partners. And the ecosystem has embraced this. I talked about Apple. I talked about Google and Samsung. I've talked about Microsoft and Windows 10. All the key apps players um, are doing this, from the ones I talked about to new ones like Epic in the course of what we're doing with VDI. And to me, one of the most exciting parts has been the security industry also starting to embrace us. Companies like Palo Alto Networks and Checkpoint and many others embracing uh, our vision to do this. 
Let's watch a quick video to give you a sense of some of the, the key customers and what they are doing with our capabilities here in the desktop and mobile portfolio. Let's roll the video. To stay ahead, industry game changers are reimagining the delivery of applications and services with VMware end user computing. The Red Cross Virtual Workplace is a web-based portal where people can get access to their Red Cross applications. So when you log in, you're interfacing with the identity manager. And once you're there, then you're working with the Horizon Enterprise Suite and you're using app volumes to deliver our different application stacks to the desktop. By working with AirWatch for the last five years, we've been able to deliver mobile solutions to our company-owned stores and also our dealers. Now we're taking the next journey and how do we enable our employees to be more productive and we're leveraging Horizon Air to help us accomplish those things. We see the opportunity for the traditional desktop world and the mobile world coming together to deliver a converged environment that's going to be a great experience for our users. We are really excited about Windows 10 and what it brings to our workspace. We don't want them to have to log into this and log into that. It's about single sign-on. It's about understanding identity and following that identity as the person is using the device. That's, that's powerful to me. Working with our partners, Dell, Microsoft, VMware, and AirWatch, um, I mean, they really come together harmoniously to create a seamless experience for our end user. Our employees have many different preferences on devices, whether it's a mobile device or a tablet or a computer. AirWatch is a great tool for managing all these different type of devices. Coca-Cola Freestyle is the ultimate beverage dispenser. We can update the software or the screens or whatever's needed. We never know what we'll use or where the technology's going for the next generation of freestyle machines and AirWatch provides us that flexibility and capability to manage those and that's what we're looking for in a partner. Amazing. Let's give a hand to those wonderful customers. What we're seeing is amazing. It's just a couple of snippets there to hear Mecklenburg County, uh, you know, a county in the southeast part of the United States say that when we bring together the capabilities of Dell and Microsoft and VMware, it's a beautiful harmony. Coca-Cola taking out that app management and taking it all the way to freestyle Internet of Things machines. And we're actually take, doing this into whole new levels. We've asked Basque Iyer, our CIO, to extend some of his capabilities in the IoT world. We have several of our key IoT partners here. We're taking some of the capabilities of AirWatch and vRealize and building out an entire IoT portfolio um, in a control center that you can learn more about uh, at that IoT pavilion. Now, unified endpoint management is absolutely a reality. And what I want to do is very quickly show you a demonstration of this capability coming together. But the key proposition of what you're trying to get done here is lower cost of ownership in Windows 10. We want to lower that cost from $7,000, what it is typically today with a lot of servers and lots of other labor, down to something 15 to 13% lower by taking endpoint management, security, and, and lifecycle automation and pulling them together. So actually, let's, let's open up my Windows 10 um, um, you know, laptop, and you can see here very quickly, I've gotten um, an opening here for us to take Workspace ONE the exact same way in which uh, you op logged in before. This could be multi-factor authentication or a simple way in which you've logged in. Here I've got the same experience as you saw on the iPad or the Samsung tablet, Workspace ONE. And I'm now going to actually go in and open, open Office 365, take a particular Excel spreadsheet, okay, and try to do something malicious. I usually don't do this, but you know, let's just say that I was trying to do this, which is copy and paste our Q2 financials. And Pat and the legal team, before you freak out, it's not real data. But let's just say I was, able, I was trying to do this and paste that into Twitter, which is not a managed application. And here, and through capabilities called conditional access, we're able to secure that data so that as I try to copy and paste, it knows that that's not allowed. You see conditional access now being able to apply it to documents inside Office 365. But let's take that a step further. I'm actually going to pick up our DAS capability, desktop as a service, go back to, to Workspace ONE, launch a VDI session, and now I'm going to go back into a desktop that may be running Windows 10 or a different Windows 10 and open up a balanced scorecard. So here's a balanced scorecard, and this balanced scorecard is talking to four different parts of the data center, okay? maybe uh, four different quadrants. I'm actually going to go with NSX and build, take that conditional access to a whole new level. I'm going to turn off a particular segment of that data center to allow me to only see certain parts of data. So I go in there just like a light switch. I turn those off. I go back to the balance scorecard, refresh it, 
and I don't have data now visible for those because access is denied. I go back and now maybe it's a person who is now inside the firewalls or maybe it's Pat, the CEO, looking at this simple light switch back on in NSX. And now we've taken conditional access all the way into the data center by hooking into that micro segmentation capabilities. That's the way, folks, that we are bringing this together in terms of unified endpoint management. We're releasing this now on a website, windowsuem.com, that all of you can get to uh, and be able to showcase. The final piece of what I want to be able to describe is management and security. And it's very important because as you deploy these apps, they need to be done quickly and easily with security. And we've been looking at this for a while, and we thought the best way to do this is in combination with a great partner. So now, allow me to bring on stage now the CEO of Tanium and the partnership that we're building with them in Trustpoint, Orion Hindavi. Welcome, Orion. Thank, Thank you. you for being with us at VMworld. Let's talk, dive right in to what we're doing together uh, in terms of this demonstration. Okay, I want to actually dive right into the product because we, we're using this internally at VMware. And let's actually see how Trustpoint works uh, in terms of the demonstration of how we use it in IT. Very cool. Go ahead. Absolutely. So we're looking at VMware's production environment here, and uh, one of the interesting things we can do is just ask questions in English. So, you know, we've got some examples here. We're not going to go and look at Sanjay's computer in particular, but, you know, if we look at uh, installed applications on their Windows machines, we can actually parse English language questions and get answers back in seconds. And what's really critical here is there's no database. We're not going to something that was collected hours or days ago. We're actually looking at data that was collected in seconds over time. And you can actually see the completion percentage there. We got 100% of the environment, over 360,000 devices or uh, applications, uh, and did that in seconds. And we can Amazing. actually filter this down, you know, be able to see every version of Firefox, be able to look at exactly what's there now. Uh, and we can actually, and we're going to show you this in a bit, take actions at the same speed. So it scales of millions of endpoints, whether it's desktop, laptop, server, VM, physical, cloud, we can actually interact with the environment and start actually seeing what's happening. And I mean, just to set this in context, many of our customers don't even know how many computers they have, much less what they're doing right now. So I was talking to a CIO recently, and he was telling me that he had between 200 and 400,000 computers. That's what he knew about his environment when we got there. And if you can imagine the situation of trying to secure something like that without knowing if you have 200 or 400,000 devices, it's a bit of a challenge. So this gives you exact information on what's happening in the environment right now. And now, now you want to take some action on this, right? Now that you've found... 100%. Take, yeah. yeah. I mean, so we can see a couple other things about this. If we wanted to look at hashes of every running process as an example, you know, the big challenge for a lot of our customers, they get all these indicators of compromise all the time. And you've got people asking, you know, do we have this application that just caused a breach in one of our peers? This is every application and every hash of every process running globally across VMware. You think about how hard this would be to do with a lot of tools that people have today. Uh, we can actually go out and see exactly what's happening in real time, and then we can filter it down again so that we can look for a particular part of a hash and be able to see exactly what's running on three machines there, a breached version of Java, and then critically be able to deploy actions at the same speed. So for the first time, you can go across millions of devices or hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands and then be able to actually take actions when you find problems and do that all in a minute instead of in days or weeks or months. That's amazing. So now you've quarantined it. You can also do more capabilities, but like potentially build a trace or so on and so forth in the wonderful capabilities of your platform. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the next thing we're going to show here is some of the things that we built on top of the platform. So you look at things like compliance or discovering unmanaged assets or finding indicators of compromise. The last one there is trace, which is deep forensics on the endpoint. And the beauty here is you can actually go and look in real time at exactly what's happening on every endpoint in the environment see whether they have drivers that are loaded, files, network connections, all the stuff that people are used to looking for, and be able to drill into one of those things, be able to see exactly what's happening, you know, look for an IP as an example, uh, and then be able to drill even deeper into that, into process information, so get amazing. really deep information about the endpoints, and then critically, when I find something that I don't like, be able to go and look at the entire environment and say, did anyone else have this problem? So what I'm describing here is really a complete sea change in the way people are doing endpoint management. 
what everything we've done in this demo would have taken days or weeks for many people, we're compressing it down to seconds. And from a security standpoint, time is probably the most important criteria on whether you're going to succeed at blocking something or whether it's going to take control of your environment. So we think compressing that is very important. And as we build this, what we can show you next is the integration we've done with TrustPoint into AirWatch. So let's bring up the AirWatch console. And now you can pick up some of that capabilities and you'll see here, here's the console you know. We're managing Windows 10 now. And you can see that we've tagged a particular uh, piece with TrustPoint. We can pick that up. And now you see all the summary information about all the devices. It could be iOS, Android, potentially Windows 10. You could actually look at the profiles. Uh, and now you've got a complete way of handling management, security, and all of lifecycle automation. Go and check out in our booth uh, the capabilities of TrustPoint. Thank you very much, Orion, for being with us. And this is a hot product. Welcome to VMworld. Thank you. Guys. Give it up, folks, for Orion. So as we wrap up here, uh, very quickly, what we are trying to bring together, you'll hear much more about with Sumit and Sean in a following session. I encourage you to go to this. But the key capabilities that you've heard today bring together this unified solution. Workspace ONE, consumer simple, where we're bringing together component spaces like VDI and mobile and identity into one single unified solution. I'd encourage you as you go about your journey, this is the way in which we think we can help you be prepared for tomorrow. Thank you very much. Now it's my pleasure to introduce and pass the baton to the next speaker, Ray O'Farrell, the CTO of VMware. Ray? Hi, Sanjay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, good morning, everybody. You know, don't you hate coming on stage after a high energy speaker like Sanjay? You know, he probably tweeted five times just while he was on stage here. Um, and it has been amazing to watch the growth of our end, using our end user computer products. And a lot of that is thanks to your partnership. You know, today thousands of customers use our desktop and mobility products to make your businesses successful. And I want to spend a moment talking about the partnership between VMware and you our customers and our partners. So let's take a little bit about, let's talk a little bit about where VMware sees this and how we look at this overall world of partnership with you. First of all, we focus on listening to you and trying to understand what are the really big problems you have to solve and together anticipate the trends and where things are going to go in the future so we can be there with you to help you succeed. And speaking of the really hard problems, they're the problems we want to focus on. We want to solve those with you. We want to solve them once, and we want to solve them once and for all. We also recognize that today, you need to operate in a world with a very broad ecosystem of hardware partners, cloud partners, just a wide variety of interactions across the board you need to make. And we want to make sure that we enable those partners so that you have choice. And finally, as the CTO, I, of course, am always focused on innovation. I just love this stuff. But I want to make sure that when we bring those new products and those new innovations to you, we do, do so leveraging the experience and the trust that we've built with you for over a decade. So what do we hear when we listen to you? One of the things we're hearing now is that you have to really deal with an interesting balancing act. And that balancing act is, on the one hand, you need to enable your organization to make a digital transformation, agility and speed. But on the other hand, you are also responsible for securing that enterprise, compliance, securing the applications associated with that. And this balancing act is felt most acutely when you need to deploy and bring cloud-native applications into production. When you start leveraging cloud-native applications, you need to embrace a whole new range of technologies, containers, new scheduling technologies, and a rapidly changing and very volatile ecosystem. You need to bring these cloud-native applications into production and do so, meeting the enterprise-class requirements of scalability, security, and reliability. Indeed, in this environment, it is even difficult sometimes to know which of your customers are you actually serving. Is it the developers, 
They are demanding fast and agile response to you because that's at the very heart, to, heart of what they need to do to make their lines of business successful. Is it those in operations and compliance? They need to protect the company. Is it the end users who eventually will leverage these apps and this infrastructure across a wide range of mobile devices? And the reality of this is it's all of the above. And VMware wants to help you solve this problem, to work this balancing act, act and allow you to deliver enterprise class cloud native applications. To tell us how we are going to do this, I'd like to welcome, please, the CTO of our cloud platform business unit, Kit Colbert. Hey, Ray. How are you doing, Kit? Not good. Good. All right. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. So, cloud native applications. You know, as Ray mentioned, we're looking at these modern apps, and we're seeing that they're increasingly being built using containers because the containers help to accelerate the software development lifecycle and accelerate application delivery, which helps the business, right? But when we think about containers and who uses them, who do we think of? That's right, hipsters, right? The startup crew, the folks with the skinny jeans on the fixed gear bikes drinking you know, artisan coffee. These are the folks that we, we see in our, you know, the stereotype of the cutting edge technologists driving all these new, new uh, cool technologies like containers. And I have a confession to make. I'm actually part hipster, if you can't tell. Right? My skinny jeans and a cardigan and everything. I live in the Mission District. So I love hipsters. But you know, it's not just about the startups that are using containers anymore. It's gone to the enterprise. I can guarantee you that every single one of your organizations in this audience today, someone there is starting to play with containers. And so that creates both opportunities as well as challenges. Let's talk about how that works. Now, containers for developers and in development Super easy, right? This is one of their big value propositions. A developer can grab a laptop, can get Docker, and they're off and running, right? Seeing value immediately. But you guys know that in order to run anything in production, there's a set of enterprise operational requirements that have to be met. And we see a lot of customers struggling with how to meet these challenges for containerized apps. I'll give you one example. I was just talking with a customer recently, and uh, I asked him, so you know, do you run uh, containerized apps in production? He's like, yeah, we got one. I'm like, OK, well, how do you, you know, pick one of these? How do you do monitoring? Right? And uh, he's like, oh, we don't do monitoring. I was like, wait, you don't do monitoring for a production application? Like, dude, that's not good. He's like, dude, I know. And I was like, dude. And so you know, we kind of had a bonding moment. But you know, <laughs> the reality is that customers struggle with these things. Now, what's happened is that you all have actually implemented all of these enterprise operational requirements in the virtual infrastructure and software-defined data centers that you've created over the past many years. So you know how to do this for traditional apps running, uh, uh, excuse me, for traditional apps running in VMs. So now the question is, how do we extend this to next generation apps running in containers? And just like we solved that infrastructure problem with virtual infrastructure, we can solve it again with enterprise container infrastructure. Enterprise container infrastructure gives you what you need to run containerized applications in production with confidence. So last year at VMworld, we announced two types of enterprise container infrastructure, vSphere integrated containers and Photon Platform. So let's talk about what's happened since last year and give you guys an update. And we'll start with vSphere integrated containers. Now, as I mentioned last year, vSphere integrated containers is really focused on giving you the best of both worlds for operations and for developers. For, for developers, they get a full stack, a Docker-compatible solution, meaning it integrates with everything they already use, the Docker ecosystem, even the native Docker client they can continue to use. And that means it's seamlessly integrated into their software development lifecycle. So great for developers. But also, for you folks in the audience, the operators, the admins, it's great for you too because it's just vSphere, right? You already know it. You've already got a great ecosystem and tooling built around it. You've been trained. You have people that are working that already. It's about extending that for containers and the full power of a software-defined data center. So let's double-click. What exactly is in vSphere integrated containers? So as we announced last year, the container engine is really the core part. This is what integrates and, or excuse me, exposes a uh, Docker-compatible API and then launches containers as VMs running on vSphere alongside traditional applications. But we heard from customers that they needed more. First. They said, we need a place to store our containers securely with enterprise capabilities, a container registry. We've added that. They also talked about the need for a portal for app teams and developers. 
you know, vSphere admins don't want to give app teams access into vSphere. And so what they need is a place for these app teams to go and manage their containers. This is exactly what we're providing with vSphere integrated containers now. So slides are great, but I know you guys would love to see a demo, right? Yeah. OK, so let's, let's switch over to a demo. So here I am. Uh, I'm a developer. And I'm logging into the container management portal that's part of vSphere integrated containers. Now, you can see all these different containerized apps that me and my team are using to, to do our development. Now, there's one app in particular I want to talk about here. It's one we built for VMworld. And if we click into it, we can see, OK, this application has five container instances as part of it. But where do the containers and the I images here come from? Well, they come from the repository, right? This is where they're stored. The developer builds something, gets wrapped them in a container image, and gets pushed out uh, to here. We can see that we have a repository that we've created for this application. But you know, a key aspect of this is security, being able to secure access and govern access to who can get at these container images. And here I've, I'm going to actually add a new member to my team, a new developer. And by adding them uh, to this list here, they can now get access to uh, our, our repo and access our container images. OK, so let's go back and provision this application. So again, just a few simple clicks, I can now start the provisioning process. Very simple, very easy. The developer could have used the command line, or they can use our UI here. All right, now let's switch gears. Let's go over to the view that you all are familiar with, the vSphere web client. So now I'm a vSphere admin. And what I've done is I've created virtual container hosts for my developers to use to provision their containers. You can see them here on the left. Now, if I refresh the screen, what you'll see is that developer we just saw creating, or excuse me, provisioning that application. As we said, that, that application has five container instances. And we can see each of those container instances here in vSphere running as tried and true VMs, right? You can click on one. You can see it's a fully fledged VM, just like all the others that you manage. So that's great. But we can do more. It's not just about vSphere, it's about the full power of the software defined data center. So I've got another virtual container host with another app. This containerized app is actually running in production. OK, so running in production, what's the first thing we need? Right, networking security. We've got to really lock this thing down and make sure that it's secure. So I have NSX, I know how to use NSX, and it works with my containerized app. I can put the database tier and the security group with really strong security and isolation. I can also take my load balance and my front end web app portions, put that in the security group that's more like a DMZ that's open to the internet, and appropriately secure my application, again, using what I already know. I talked about that customer example earlier with monitoring. Well, you know, I use vRealize operations. And the great thing is that vRealize operations works with my containerized applications now. So here I am on my database for this app, and look, I got a health problem, right? We can see it's red. So something's going on. It looks like the storage latency is high. So let's go troubleshoot that. I know how to do this. I know, I know vRealize operations. And what I can see here, looking at the metric graph on the bottom, is that, wow, latency is super high, you know, two and a half seconds. I can visually also see that the data store this application is running on is red, meaning the data store is probably overloaded. OK, now I need to go root cause that and figure out why that's overloaded. But in the short term, because this is a production app, I need to get back up and running as quickly as possible. And again, I know how to do that. That data store is, has storage I.O. control enabled. So I can simply go back to my containerized application to its VM, edit its settings, and increase the storage I.O. control shares to high, meaning it gets a, that it gets a higher priority than the other applications running on that data store, and thus should go back to better performance. So if I go back to vRealize Ops, I can now see, if you do a refresh here, I can now see that, yeah, the latency's gone down. And I bet if I go back to the summary tab and do a quick refresh, I can see that, indeed, the health is back to normal. So great. I can leverage the existing tools I already have to get containerized applications running in production. But we can do even more. So you notice at the beginning there, I talked about the creating that virtual container host. Now, that's something that I, as an admin, had to do manually. And I don't like to do anything manually. I like to automate things. I want to deliver container hosts truly as a service to my developers and app teams. And to do that, I need vRealize automation. So here in vRealize automation, I can go in there, and I can uh, create a catalog item for this container host. Now, that can, uh, can be provisioned automatically using this blueprint I've defined here. But it's not just about automation. Because anything as a service, you need governance. You need to be able to control when and how these things are provisioned. That's exactly what I've created here with this policy. This means that uh, for a developer to provision a container host, we need their manager's approval. Right? OK. So this is great. Now let's flip, switch gears, go back to the de developer view. So if we go back to the developer view, now we know developers, right? They like to move fast. 
They don't like to file tickets, especially the hipster developers. I mean, tickets are like kryptonite to those guys, right? They want to do everything themselves automatically through a self-service UI or API. So here we are, and I can go in there and select this virtual container host to expand the pool of resources for the applications that I want to run. And I can see the configuration, I can go and make that request. Now again, my manager has to approve it, but you know, we're in a keynote, so the manager's gonna approve it very quickly. And we can go and check uh, to see that that's been provisioned. Now the cool thing that we're looking at here is the same container management portal we saw originally is also built into vRealize Automation. So I can go back here to a familiar UI, I can see my two old container hosts, previously manually provisioned, and my new one, which has been automatically provisioned. So again, we can see how the full power of the software-defined data center and the automation capabilities of vRealize Automation can be brought to bear on, on containerized applications using everything you already have today. Okay, so let's flip back to the slides. So you can see here from an architecture point of view, vSphere integrated containers is really kind of a thin layer that we've built in to the core of this very broad ecosystem of vSphere and the software-defined data center. So again, really, really powerful stuff, enabling true enterprise container infrastructure and true enterprise-grade containers as a service. So we're really excited about this, and customers have been who have been using it are excited as well. So let's hear from a couple of those customers right now. Please roll the video. Lightweight, faster, more efficient. Three good reasons these companies have deployed VMware's vSphere integrated containers. Today, we are working with vSphere integrated containers to prepare our cloud platform for this new consumption model. vSphere integrated containers will help us to industrialize our providing process. It is a great new way to allow developers to access our resources without rebuilding our existing private cloud. VMware is a key partner on the journey and evolution of Auto Group's IT. VMware has been a strategic partner for us for the past decade by anticipating our infrastructural needs in one way and providing innovative products all the way. We use vSphere as a backbone for the virtualization infrastructure. We use vRealize Automation for all the automation tasks and uh, private cloud provisioning. We started using containers recently, and uh, that's because we saw the chance of adding a new layer of abstraction that goes beyond the operating systems. It allows us to uh, keep the existing tool set for operations while allowing the dev teams uh, to leverage the new uh, application architectures that come with containers. Awesome. So very cool to see what these customers are doing with vSphere integrated containers. But you know, it's not just about customers, it's also about partners. Now we have literally over a thousand different partners whose technologies integrate with vSphere. And the great part about vSphere integrated containers is that it allows these partner technologies to be extended to work with containers. But we're doing even more. We're working with a select group of partners to really drive deeper integration into vSphere integrated containers uh, because it is quite a modular architecture and so these different partners technologies can integrate and swap out with different components from vSphere integrated containers. So a lot of exciting stuff happening there. So vSphere integrated containers is available today as an open source project out on GitHub. Every part that we just talked about is open source on GitHub right this moment, so please go to that URL and check it out. Also, we're launching a beta for this expanded vSphere integrated containers product. So if you're interested in signing up for the beta, the URL is right there. Okay, so that's vSphere integrated containers. Lots of cool stuff. But let's switch gears and talk about Photon Platform. Now before talking about what Photon Platform is, it's important to understand the problem that Photon Platform solves. And we talked about the, the speed and velocity of application delivery. And a number of businesses are looking at how they rethink everything to dramatically improve that velocity. And that rethinking goes top to bottom, all the way down to the infrastructure. So the architectures they're trying to drive look like the following. They take all these physical resources that they have and pool them into uh, logical pools of compute, network, storage, they layer on top a distributed control plane and scheduler with a single logical API endpoint for the application teams to leverage. Then they break that infrastructure into pieces, into availability zones, right? I mean, there's no, high avail there's no assumed availability of any individual host. And in fact, many whole data centers could go down. So you have to expose that sort of availability uh, concept up to the applications. The applications themselves are then split up by tenant, from, uh, by tenancy, from multi-tenancy uh, and security. 
And then the applications themselves are built using these next generation application frameworks like Cloud Foundry, Kubernetes, Docker. And of course, you have CI CD systems. So those applications are getting revved every day, every hour, oftentimes every few minutes. So these are the sort of architectures we see some customers going towards. And as you can imagine, it's pretty complex to realize these sorts of things, right? There's a lot of challenges there. This is exactly why we're creating Photon. The idea of Photon Platform is to drive radical simplicity into that infrastructure aspect of those architectures. So what Photon Platform is, at its most fundamental, are fabrics of compute, network, and storage with strong security and multi-tenancy, a simple API on top for full automation, and then deep integration into all the different cluster frameworks. And we do that in a way that's super simple, you can use right out of the box. So this is really cool, and we're seeing a lot of excitement around it. And uh, just like we have these integrated containers, open source and freely available, so is Photon Platform at the GitHub URL you see right there. We also have launched a commercial version of, uh, of Photon called the VMware Pivotal Cloud Native Stack. That combines Photon Platform with the industry-leading applica cloud native application platform, Pivotal Cloud Foundry. So very interesting package you should go check out. We also are announcing that coming soon there'll be a new commercial offering of Photon Platform combining Kubernetes and NSX. So a lot happening in the Photon Platform space as well. So we have vSphere integrated containers and Photon Platform. vSphere integrated containers focus on extending your vSphere environments, your SCDC environments to support containers. Photon Platform focus more on greenfield, container only, high scale environments. These are both enterprise container infrastructures. And the reality is when you look at the journey from where you are today to that cloud native future you want to get to, VMware has the right solution to help you on that journey. So you know, there's a tremendous amount of activity happening within the cloud native space at VMworld. Uh, there's a guide here, please go check it out. There's a spotlight session happening right after this keynote, I highly encourage you to, to go to. Please stop by the booth and ask all the questions you want. Everything we're doing is open source and available out on GitHub, so please, I encourage you, go check that out. And finally, the VSP Integrated Containers Beta Program is right there. So thank you guys very much, and with that, I'll hand it back to Ray. Thank you. Thank you, Kit. Thanks, Ray. Thanks. So a lot of what you've heard underlying the fundamental technology which Kit has spoken about, in fact, many of the products you're going to hear about at VMworld today, is the software-defined data center. And it's, as Pat mentioned yesterday, it's a few years ago when my colleague, Raghu Raghuram, stood on a VMworld stage and spoke about this concept of the software-defined data center. It was roughly the same time when a famous article, a now famous article, was published in the Wall Street Journal, speaking of why software is eating the world. In the context of the data center, SDDC and private cloud exemplify these trends. Many of you have confidently built on the SDDC to take your businesses to the next level. You have been on this journey with us. Thousands of SDDC customers, you are banks, hospitals, government agencies, retailers, nonprofits, insurance companies, cloud companies. All of you have leveraged this technology to drive this fundamental transformation in your business. But let's not talk about this in the abstract, about how this transformation was made. Instead, let's actually hear from a customer who's gone through that transformation, leveraging VMware technologies. So let's hear from one such customer, the Senior Director of Infrastructure and Operations at Nike, Mike Wittick. What's up, Ray? Hi, Mike. How are you doing? We're good, man. Good to see you. So, Mike, you know, everybody knows about Nike. It's a world-famous company, a world-famous brand. If you're watching the Olympics, you know, half the people seem to be wearing Nike gear. But we work with you as a technology partner. And could you tell us a little bit about that? How does technology fit into the broader picture of Nike? Yeah, sure. Uh, Nike is a growth company. Uh, we did $32 billion in revenue uh, in our last fiscal year. Uh, and our plan is to get to $50 billion by 2020. And a big engine for that growth is our digital strategy with Nike.com and apps like Nike Plus and sneakers. And on the off chance that maybe some of you haven't downloaded those apps yet, it's S-N-K-R-S, -S, sneakers. Uh, and so to position That's ourselves. That's kind of hipster, right? What's that? That's hipster, right? That's it, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's a cool factor. So um, 
to position ourselves for that growth, uh, we replatformed Nike.com to a brand new data center last year. And it was a great opportunity, greenfield build, which you don't get very often. And in order to do that and take advantage of some of the latest technologies that would help us with that growth, but also to get out of the old data center on time, we needed automation technologies like OpenStack. And we needed a partner to help us to achieve OpenStack successfully. So that's why we chose VIO and NSX. Uh, and we were able to get out of that data center on time and to complete our build on the date that we needed to hit. Can you talk a little bit about the partnership with VMware as you went through this? You had a choice in terms of what technology you chose. You chose to use VIO. You know, we had that partnership with you as you went through this journey. This was a big transformation. Can you tell us a little bit about that, working with VMware? Just how did all that work out for you? Yeah, it worked out really, really well. Um, you know, we, uh, we needed to leverage your expertise in these technologies. We needed help to get a lot of these new products and new versions of products in successfully. Uh, and it worked out we hit records for sales and for volume on Nike.com, up 39% uh, total revenue in Nike.com over the last year. And in addition to that, we extended Nike.com into our retail stores with an application that we call Assist. And we deliver Assist onto uh, Apple devices in our retail stores with AirWatch. And the way that works is if you walk into uh, a Nike store that's focused on running, but you want to buy golf shoes, instead of inviting you to go home and get on Nike.com and order the shoes, we can place that digital order for you right there in the store and essentially make all of our digital inventory available in every single one of the stores that we have. And as that got success and we continued to grow, we also moved Converse.com and Hurley.com onto that same Nike.com platform. And so now we've got the $8 billion in revenue that is our retail stores and Nike.com all running on a VIO OpenStack controlled infrastructure, software defined with NSX. By the way, there is a new version of that VIO OpenStack product being announced here at VMworld, version 3.0, just is coming out right now. So when you look back at this, you know, in the end, it's all around business results. And you did sort of hint at some of those or talk to some of those. But do you view this with success? And does your, you know, from the business, do they view this transformation as success? And I guess then the next question is, if it was successful, they're going to ask you to do more. That's so right. what is that next step? Yeah, that's right. Nothing like success. So yep. it, it did work out really well. Everyone's been really happy with the performance and with those numbers. Uh, and what it's allowed us the ability to do is extend that beyond uh, our retail and, and digital businesses to the rest of Nike. So there is huge opportunity for us to replatform all of the other applications that drive our wholesale business, that drive all of our corporate apps onto that same software-defined data center. And it can sometimes be tricky to find people uh, that understand these technologies and can deploy them and operate them at scale. So if you are interested in something like that, where you're running these latest technologies for a company that size, think about Nike. Because we recognize that we have to be a technology-focused company if we're going to hit the revenue growth that we need to hit. So it's a very exciting time for us. Excellent. Thank you, Mike. Great. Thanks a lot. Thank man. you very much, and thanks for the partnership. My Thank pleasure. You. And thanks. you. So as I mentioned already, the underlying technology underneath many of the products that you learn about here today and over the next few days is the software-defined data center. And that is one of the key technologies underneath uh, VIO as well. There are three key elements to the software-defined data center. There's compute, storage, and networking. And at its core is vSphere. This is an amazing product. I cut my teeth at VMware working on vSphere. And today, 500,000 of you, more than 500,000 of you, customers of VMware today, run your infrastructure on vSphere. We're not going to go into some of the big advances that are coming in vSphere right now. We're going to do that at VMworld Barcelona. But stay tuned for that. When you go to manage the software-defined data center, more and more, of you, more and more of you are using the vRealize suite. About 20,000 customers leverage the vRealize suite to manage their SDDC. But today we're going to focus on two of the newer elements of the SDDC. That is virtual networking and virtual storage, exemplified by the products NSX and vSAN. And to dive a little bit deeper into this, I would like to welcome, please, the leader of our networking and security business unit, Rajiv Ramaswani.
Bye, Rajiv. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Morning. I'm honored and excited to be here in front of you, our customers, our partners, to talk about this journey that we're on, network virtualization. Together, we're headlong into the most significant infrastructure transformation that I've seen in my 25 plus years in the industry. Being new to VMware, uh, let me tell you a bit about myself. Now, I came to the US for graduate, graduate school and have spent my entire career in the networking industry, starting out at IBM, Cisco, Broadcom, and now VMware. I started out as a research guy, you know, writing research papers and coming out with new ideas at, at IBM. And back then, even then, this was 25 years ago, you know, I thought that you know, networking could conceptually be done in software. To put this into context, here's a uh, picture of me and my mentor in our research labs back then. I was just a bit younger. You also see an IEEE research paper that I wrote. This was published in 1996. And ironically, the topic was network overlays. You used to call it logical topologies back then. Now, as a research guy, you know, I knew that you know, not all great concepts necessarily made it to commercial success. However, the concept of network virtualization did. It made that rare journey from an academic concept to mainstream adoption. We are mainstream. Today, in our third year of shipping NSX, we've seen 400% growth in our customer base over the last 18 months, with over 1,700 customers deploying product today. NSX has entered the tornado phase, as Pat mentioned yesterday. You in the audience who've joined us on this journey already, thank you. For the rest of you, let me invite you to join us on this wonderful NSX journey. Now, what's behind this? We all know that the data center has been transforming over the last several years. Networking is moving from a hardware-centric approach, vertically integrated, to a software-centric approach. This allows you to innovate, create agility and responsiveness in your network, and meet the needs of your business. Yet, many of you still struggle with age-old challenges in infrastructure. What are some of these challenges? You're concerned about securing your data center. You've got a mandate to automate and speed up the provisioning of your applications. You continue to struggle with ensuring application continuity. So let's talk about the first challenge. Security. You know, the average cost of a data breach is about $4 million. But many data breaches can cost you a lot more, right? Over a billion dollars. Microsegmentation is an amazing technology that we pioneered with NSX. For the first time, you can provide every application with its own firewall. This provides CISOs with a way to attack security problems that they just could never do before. Now, the second challenge, automation. It's a business imperative for you. You need to be able to turn up applications instantly. And with server virtualization and SDDC, we're getting you there. The problem has been the network. Networking can slow you down, right, by weeks, if not months. With NSX, you can deliver networking and security at VM speeds. Challenge number three. You know, if you're unprepared when a disaster hits you, you know, it hits both your bottom line and your reputation. With NSX, your network and your security are always on. So how are your peers solving these three challenges with NSX? Let's look at some examples. 
Let's start with West Bend Mutual Insurance. They're a leading provider in the Midwest, and I was actually talking to Brandon from uh, West Bend yesterday, and you know, he says, you know, selling insurance is not just selling insurance, it's selling a promise. If a breach occurs, that promise is broken, and the company forever loses the trust. Imagine what that would do to an insurance business. So, West Bend is here talking about, at VMworld about how they use NSX to prevent this risk from happening in their environment. Citibank, it's a great example of a large financial who standardized and fully automated their global operations with the help of NSX. You know, it was Citi who was with us on stage at VMworld 2013 when we launched NSX. And it was amazing to see them here on stage again yesterday with Moti talking about their cross-cloud architecture and how they're with us on this journey. Finally, let's take a look at an organization that has application continuity under control. So Bay State Health out of New England, they've built a resilient pool of network and security resources across three data centers. So they run their applications across all three, and they've achieved high availability, disaster avoidance, and faster response times. At the same time, they've saved over $7 million compared to doing this with more traditional approaches. In fact, as customers have started using network virtualization, they're now solving an even broader array of challenges. They'll start out solving a particular problem, and they'll move on to solve other problems in their infrastructure. For example, developer cloud, securing users, end users, like using either AirWatch for mobile and mobility or virtual desktops, and now we're talking about extending into their branch offices and remote offices. At VMworld, you've got 40 of your peers here to talk about their experiences with NSX. Lauren from Autodesk is going to be running a fantastic session on using NSX for the developer cloud. There is a super panel tomorrow with many customers, long-standing customers of ours, talking about how they've operationalized NSX in their environments. Cody from pg and is going to be talking about how they've automated their private cloud with the help of NSX. These are just a few examples of how NSX has been transformative to your business. Let's now hear directly from a few NSX customers. One thing you'll see here is that the awareness of NSX and the importance of NSX you know, hits everybody in the organization, all the way from a cloud architect to the engineering leadership, all the way up to the CIO. Let's play the video. As they virtualize their networks, these three companies have found VMware's NSX to be strategic at every level of the organization. We currently have one of the largest digital footprints for printing in the world today. That's an awful lot of data. And the compute behind that data is massive. What have we done to solve this problem? Well, we've turned to virtualization. NSX, to me, provides all the true value because of its integration, because of its automation capabilities, and also because of its baked-in security abilities that can make the private cloud journey a lot more smoother from a customer perspective. We have adopted software-defined networking as the primary strategy for all of our data centers. We can then make our workloads fully portable across any of our data center. And when the regulatory environment allows us to, we can pick those workloads up and move them to whatever target facility we want. You don't have to worry about changing the firewall rules because logically those things should move with the application. Businesses live, breathe, and survive on their digital capability, even in the food industry. VMware has always been a significant part of our environment. And now the advent of the software-defined data center, specifically NSX, is really a security play, number one. Micro-segmentation is a key part of our strategy. Having a secure, agile network is very key to the operations of the business. So Ed from Sugar Creek may have just said it the best. As he says, having a secure agile network is key to the operations of the business. That's what he was able to do with NSX, and so can you. 
Now, as I've talked to many customers here uh, since I joined VMware, you know, many of you like this concept, you like the use cases, and what you can do with it. You're sort of trying to figure out, you know, how do I get started with this, and how do I operationalize this, deploy this in my environment? And so what we thought we'd do here is to walk you through that experience from soup to nuts, from start to finish. And to do that, I'd like to welcome Jacob Rapp. Hi, Rajiv. Welcome, Jacob. Jacob Thanks. leads our uh, technical product management team here with NSX. And so what are you going to walk them to? Sure. So first off, we're, customers are telling us they're understanding the benefit of micro-segmentation and what NSX brings. But they're still struggling with going from their current unsecured infrastructure to one secured by micro-segmentation. So we've identified four simple steps to help them with that process. Assess, um, plan, enforce, and monitor. So first of all, even before you get NSX installed in your environment, you can get a free pre-assessment report from a tool called vRealize Network Insight, where we can analyze the traffic patterns to show what benefit micro-segmentation can bring in your actual environment, all delivered in a really simple pre-assessment report. Very cool. So all of you can just run this free tool and get a sense of how protected or not your current infrastructure is. So from the report, you can decide your next steps. So let's talk about how they can go to the next journey, the next step in that journey, and, and start doing the planning process. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the first step, we've got to get NSX installed, of course. So from there, uh, we'll, we're going to be showing a early tech preview of our planning tool built directly into the NSX UI within the vSphere web client. The core concept of planning is to actually capture all the data mm -hmm. so that we can analyze it and create our micro-segmentation plan. So here we have an SAP app we've already collected the flows for. So let's analyze. So in real time, you can see that the flows are going to get collapsed into traffic patterns. And then from there, we can group them into common security groups. So we end up with a very simple security policy for our app. And then from there, we can actually visualize that plan in what we call an application map, made up of virtual machines, the security groups we just created, and the communication flow between them. And Rajiv, that becomes our micro-segmentation plan. So really cool. So NSX, once you deploy it, will automatically come out and figure out what the rules are that you need to then deploy. So the next step, of course, is getting it enforced. How do we do that? Yeah, Rajiv, that's actually a really simple part. We click on Create New Rules, and the plan gets moved over to our Firewall tab, where from there, it'll actually get deployed directly down into our distributed firewall, and then our app secured. So it's as simple as that. Just a simple push button click, and you're done. Yeah, really, Rules that's are it. enforced. Your network is secure. Yeah. Very cool. So now you guys have all deployed this, and then the question is, how do you monitor what's going on? How do you troubleshoot that? So Jacob, let's walk through that. Sure. So let's actually dive into the tool we talked about earlier for our pre-assessment, vRealize Network Insight. So one of the common troubleshooting challenges we hear is that looking for a particular security rule is like trying to find a needle in a haystack. So we created a simple Google Lite search experience, but we'll look in all of our infrastructure, not just the virtual, but also down into the physical. So as we can see from our search results, we've found our rule from not only our distributed firewall, but also from one of our partner physical firewall devices. We found that needle. The next scenario uh, for troubleshooting that we hear is looking at the communication patterns from one virtual machine to another. So in this scenario, visibility is really the key element. So with vRealize Network Insight, we can combine all the data sources from our physical and our virtual all in one place. So we can create this really nice end-to-end -end path from our virtual machines down through the NSX components and into our physical architectures, our routers, our switchers, and our physical devices. Do you have the exact end-to-end -end path? That's really cool. Thank you so much, Jacob. Yeah, Thanks thank for you. this. Thanks for walking us through this. That was pretty powerful. You know, you've seen this end-to-end -end deployment for micro-segmentation, and you've seen how we are trying to simplify this, make it easy for you to deploy, make it easy for you to troubleshoot and monitor it. So let's look at you know, the future in terms of where you guys are going. Now, as you look at the future, you know, a lot of things aren't changing. You're still concerned about making sure that your apps run securely. 
they're always available. And you need to be able to deliver applications quickly. So those things haven't really changed. But lots of other things are changing around you, right? Your infrastructure is changing. Your architecture, your application architectures are changing. User behavior, security threats are constantly evolving. You may be running your applications on a private cloud. You may be running them on a public cloud. And likely, you're probably doing both. Some of the newer applications that your developers are building may be built on top of container frameworks, as, as Kit mentioned before. Regardless of where you're running your application and how you're running those applications, NSX is with you to help you manage, to help you speed up, and help you secure those applications. That's the vision for NSX. Now, let's hear from one more customer, Amadeus. They're a leader in global travel technology, and they'll talk about how we're part of their next generation cloud architecture. Video, please. Amadeus is helping businesses manage the global travel ecosystem with VMware's NSX. If you're embarking on the journey to move production of a very critical piece of the travel ecosystem onto new technology, it's a very careful undertaking. So we got pressure on availability, we got pressure on agility, and clearly a continued pressure on cost. And on top of that, you have to build your innovation. I think adopting Kubernetes two years ago was and going OpenStack is still uh, not mainstream, uh, even though I believe it will be. NSX is positioning you very well on this market. Whether I'm deploying containers, whether I'm deploying VMs, whether I'm doing bare metal, whether I'm using OpenStack, look, it's all means to an end. Automation that gives me the flexibility to deploy either on a public cloud, on my private cloud. This, this is what I need to have. And then we choose the means that's best suited for the application. So, you've heard how NSX solves a number of critical problems for you today. You've seen how you can deploy and operationalize NSX in your environment. NSX is absolutely foundational for your infrastructure. You've heard from many customers, Amadeus, Nike, Citibank, Johnson & Johnson, Columbia Sportswear, about how they're all using NSX. We are on a journey with them as they evolve to cross-cloud and new application architectures. I invite you, all of you, every single one of you, to join us on this wonderful journey. Thank you. Thank you. So now I'd like to ask uh, Yan Bing Lee to come on stage and talk about Hyperconverged. Yan Bing, welcome. Thank you, Rajiv. Well done. Thanks. Thank you. Good morning, VMworld. I'm excited to be back on stage again this year to talk about hyperconverged infrastructure powered by virtual SAM. I'm going to share with you how our customers are embracing the solution and what we're doing in terms of innovation. Throughout this morning, we've taken a journey through the cross-cloud architecture. This requires a really strong and proven storage foundation. And that can be powered by virtual SAN or virtual volume backed arrays. And I'm going to dive in more to virtual SAN. Virtual SAN is directly implemented as part of vSphere, the hypervisor you trust and love. Its software defined is optimized for Flash. This provides a natural stepping stone to VMware Cloud Foundation and also to the cross-cloud architecture. So of course, we've saved the best for last. Since launched two and a half years ago, we've seen tremendous customer adoption. We're now at 5,000 unique virtual SAN customers. What excites me mo the most is this accelerated growth in the past few, past few months. We're adding about 100 virtual SAN customers every single week. Whether you call this crossing the chasm or reaching the inflection point, or in my language, the year of HCI, vSAN is going into mainstream. 5,000 customers. Wow. That makes vSAN 
the most widely adopted HCI solutions out there. And our customers are across all industry, from finance to healthcare to retail to cloud providers. And 40% of Fortune 1000 companies today have deployed virtual SAM. In a recent customer survey, we asked our customers what type of workload they're running on virtual SAM. Out of the 250 respondents, 64% of them told us they're using virtual SAM for business critical applications. They're running Microsoft, SQL, Oracle, SAP, and much more. Let's take a few, let's take a look at a few customer stories. CH2M is a Fortune 500 company behind the scene for some of the most amazing infrastructure project. Their IT infrastructure spanned for across 400 global sites. They've implemented vSAN ReadyNodes based on HP server platform. They love vSAN's flexibility to support all their workload need. And they told us they've improved their performance by 20x because of the old flash vSAN implementation. They're also telling us they've achieved zero-touch management for the remote office. Another example is Dimension Data. Dimension Data powers with some of the world's most important professional cycling events. They need to build a mobile data center in the form of a big data truck. They need something that is very compact, yet very high performing, because they need to analyze real-time race data and the vast amount of real-time race data. So they picked VxRail. VxRail is a co-engineered product by VMware and EMC. It's a killer HCI appliance, fully integrated, easy to, to deploy, and give you the benefit of a single vendor support. So Dimension Data was able to achieve 350 million computation per second through their VxRail implementation. And it's very compact fits very nicely into their truck. What do I like about this story? The small form factor of VxRail powering really big computation. Much like VxRail's fearless leader, Chad Sackage. Besides private cloud use case, vSAN is also gaining traction in public cloud. We've heard about IBM software that they're using VMware Cloud Foundation powered by vSAN. Another example is OVH, the number one hosting provider in Europe. They have implemented vSAN in an old flash fashion on top of custom servers built with super micro components. And what they have seen in terms of their results, five times better performance than another software defined storage solution they previously adopted, and also eight times faster deployment for their customers. It's one thing to hear from me, it's another thing to hear directly from a customer. So let's turn to the video from Amway. Global direct selling leader Amway simplified and accelerated their storage capabilities with hyper-converged infrastructure powered by VMware Virtual SAN. As we started looking at our private cloud environment, um, there was a desire really to get to a commodity cost solution competitive with public cloud. Virtual SAN is simplifying storage management by incorporating everything into the vSphere client. It's very easy to set up. It's literally a checkbox to enable vSAN on the cluster. vSAN has allowed our engineers to be able to focus on more uh, production initiatives and so they're deploying storage on a faster pace and allowing it to be automated. One of the business benefits is that our remote sites that aren't equipped to handle a traditional SAN infrastructure, we're able to provide shared storage at these sites now. So we have about 300 virtual desktops that the developers are using. Some of their tools took 20 minutes to open. After we moved to vSAN, it took less than a minute to open. Users actually wanted to use their virtual desktops instead of dreading using their virtual desktops. The project cost came in considerably lower than what our existing architect had in place, and it gave us some flexible options going forward. The investment from VMware and how rapidly they've been able to move forward those capabilities has been impressive. It's performant, it's cost effective, we can easily expand the cluster, we're getting 10 times the performance easily. Thank you, Emily. As you can see from these customer examples, 
vSAN is going into mainstream deployment. So why did this customer choose hyperconverged infrastructure? And why did they pick vSAN as their solution? First of all, vSAN as part of vSphere is really sitting on a foundation that you trust and love. For vSphere, it means like yourself. This is like a dream come true. With the same familiar tool that you already use, you can manage compute and storage at the same time. So ultimate simplicity. Cost saving, a lot of our customers are telling us we've been able to allow them to ch ch save costs for their, for their environment and allow them to work on more strategic projects. And this is because of all the optimization we've done for all flash. Last but not least, choice. We offer the broadest hardware choice as well as the choice to use a cloud provider. So this is a moment that I'd like to use to thank our ecosystem partners out there. You made us the most widely supported HCI solution. We're supported by all the major server vendors and all the major hardware component vendors. And also we're seeing more than 100 cl cloud providers offering their service on top of vSAN. You know, Mway, CH2M, use vSAN for their private cloud. And Dimension Data use vXREL, the appliance, for their mobile cloud. And we have also seen SoftLayer and OVH use it for public cloud implementation. And we're not stopping here. This March, we launched vSAN 6.2, which makes the product truly enterprise ready. And we continue to innovate in three key areas. First, workload. You know, how we continue to support even more demanding workload, such as big data. And how we can expand to support next generation applications, such as container. You've heard from Kit this morning about VMware's enterprise container strategy. vSAN is going to be the default storage platform for vSphere integrated container, as well as Photon platform where you get enterprise class shared storage, all the capability that you have supporting your container needs. Management. We've been on a journey on policy-based management through storage policies. And we're doing a lot more than that. We're taking it to intelligence. We're introducing a set of intelligent performance analytics so that we can help you predict infrastructure problems and address the problem before it occurs. That's what next generation management looks like. Last but not least, security. You heard about Rajiv and Sanjay speaking about our end-to-end -end security story. What about your data at rest? We're introducing fully integrated software-defined encryption so that you can have peace of mind for your data wherever it is, in your private cloud, or in your public cloud. The best way to showcase all of this is through a demo. Here you're seeing the familiar vSphere web client. I have in my private environment a vSAN cluster that is implemented as a hybrid cluster. And this is running my SQL application. Because this is a critical application, I'm turning on vSAN's fault domain so that I can specify enterprise class rec of awareness to give me the protection I'm looking for. Let me turn to vSense performance analytics service. And this is a capability we're previewing. I specify a time window, and I can see that even though I'm meeting my performance demand right now, I'm about to see a surge of demand. And this also making a recommendation at the same time that I should be moving my workload from the hybrid cluster to an old flash cluster for much better performance. You know how to move a cloud, uh, how to move a VM in this environment, but I have a better way. Let's switch gear to vRealize automation. Because of the integration with storage policy, through a single click of changing your storage policy, I will be able to automate and orchestrate the movement of my workload. It's done. Let me go back to my vSphere interface. Let's see where my VM is now. I can see my VM is moving. This will be taking a little bit of time. We fast forward to where it is right now. Okay, I can see 
is now in SoftLayer, a public cloud environment. Wow, it actually ended up in public cloud. So this is probably the simplest demo I have seen. I've really done two things, only two actions. One, I turned on vSense performance analytics, where it helped me predict my infrastructure problem and also allow me to have a recommendation of what to do with that problem. Second, I went to vRealize automation, and with a single click policy change, all these things just happen behind the scene. And there is one more capability that's working behind the scene, that is NSX. With NSX, I was able to maintain my security policy, my network policy, and consistent gateway so that this migration can happen in a seamless, non-disruptive fashion. So what you've just seen is VMware Cloud Foundation in action, in my private cloud environment and in my public cloud environment. And this is the power of VMware's cross-cloud architecture. So what's more in a cross-cloud era? We spend a lot of time talking about storage, how we can build a better enterprise class storage solution as that solid foundation. But the future of cross-cloud is much more about data, how you consume, manage your vast amount of data situated in your multiple cloud. So this is where we're taking our eye from building storage to build better data management. It starts with disaster recovery and data protection that's natively integrated into our product set so that we can support the demand of enterprise applications. It goes to workload mobility. As you can see from the demo I did today, and as Guido's demo yesterday, we want to allow your workload to move seamlessly and securely between different type of private and public cloud. And then we extend to data governance. By extending our policy from infrastructure policy to data policy, we will be able to help you manage your data compliance and data governance need. So that is where we're focusing next. So this is a great time for me to invite Ray back on stage so that he can summarize all the innovations we've showcased today and conclude the session. Thank you, Yan Thank you. Thank you. So I expected you to finish on the usual Go Vsan. <laughs> so you've um, seen from Rajiv and Yan Bing how innovation is taking place at the very heart of the SDC. We're driving hardcore technology advancements at the heart of the SDC. But you've also heard from Yan Bing about our focus on hyperconverged infrastructure and how you value its simplicity. It is this simplicity which Pat spoke of yesterday when he introduced VMware Cloud Foundation. So VMware Cloud Foundation brings together the foundational components of the SDDC. It is a unified and integrated product. This is more than a bundling exercise. This is true integration. It focuses on easy deployment, configuration, and day two operation of all of the components of the SDDC. It is truly a hyper-converged software platform for the private and public cloud. So over the past two days, we have shared many product and solution innovations with you. And you can get all the details of them as you go to the various breakout sessions and so on across VMworld. But let's recap a little bit the overall vision here. This is a VMware vision which recognizes that you will need to deal with multiple clouds, private cloud, public cloud, hybrid clouds, any cloud. This is a vision that recognizes that you need to support and manage many different types of applications, traditional applications, cloud native applications, and even applications delivered from SaaS platforms, any application. And this is a vision which recognizes that the way that your end users consume and access these applications and this infrastructure is across a wide range of devices, 
from mobile devices to laptops to IoT devices, any device. It is this vision, in partnership with you, that will drive your business success for tomorrow. So what is next for you here at VMworld? First, learn how VMware's cross-cloud products and solutions will prepare you for this future. Second, engage with VMware, with our partners, and with 20,000 of your closest friends. Finally, embrace the opportunity to be a leader in this digital transformation. Because together, we are ready to be tomorrow. Thank you, and have a great VMworld.